Welcome to the Parley Dome. What were the top three gigs you ever attended? And why are they top three? Like, there's got to be something special and a story you can tell about. And if you if it makes it easier for you guys to like brainstorm about like gigs and like shows and specific incidences, you can list one off and we'll go around three times. That's good idea. Uh, I think my number one would have to be Ozzy Osbourne. I want to say it was about 2017, 2018. Uh, Zach Wilde wasn't a full-time member of the band at the time, but he brought them back for this tour. Now, I've seen Black Sabbath a couple of times. I'm more of a Sabbath fan than an Aussie fan. Yeah. The Sabbath stuff sounded better with Aussie's band playing it. No disrespect to Sabbath. There was just that extra oomph, that power. Um, when he did No More Tears, that's one of the most transcendent performances I've seen from any band ever. Uh, Zach Wilde as well, just... He got to show a lot more of his physical presence than he did um, seeing Black Label Society live. He's not having to manage the piano or the vocals. He just formed a perfect horseshoe. I have never seen a man squat this wide, and he's literally just like that. <laughs> I almost fell over there. Um, and it was just mind-blowing. And Ozzy was just perfectly on point. That would probably be my best one. I'd probably say Faith No More the first time I saw them. They did their reunion in 2015. And look, I think Mike Patton's the best vocalist of all time, bar none. And yeah, he was better live than in studio. It was mind blowing. Just also Faith No More or other than perhaps Pantera or Typo Negative, they were the kind of the big one that got away of a lot of those sort of eighties, nineties bands that I got into after their prime when they'd broken up. And yeah, Faith No More, I mean, to this day, I I would put them up there with any band in history, straight up. Uh, for diversity, for execution, for ability to evolve. Yeah, they're, they're in my top five to ten bands ever. Third? Third's a tough one. Um, I'd probably have to go with seeing London After Midnight and The Birthday Massacre in New York. Um, I'm a big fan of The Birthday Massacre. They've been my favorite band for about 12 years. But seeing them in Toronto is a bit of a shit show sometimes. It's a hometown show. It's more of a party vibe. It's not as much about the music as I'd like. Seeing them in New York in uh, Irving Plaza, which is a great venue. Uh, seeing them with a bunch of people that had never seen them before, so they weren't your usual sort of jaded birthday massacre crowd. It wasn't the friends and family crowd. I've seen them about 12 times, and that was their best show out of the ones I've seen. And they managed to top London after midnight, who are amazing. That was a very moving performance from a band I never thought I'd get to see live, because they only really play like London, Paris, and New York. So to see both of them in the same night and that's two bands I always thought would go really well in a show together. Mm -hmm. I always joked about, oh man, it would be awesome to see that show. Just as wildfire speculation, and I did actually get to see it. So yeah, that'd be my top three. And I mean, that's... To pick those three out of everything that I've been to is tough. Yeah. Not to you, brag, but I've been to a, a lot. I've been to a few yeah. hundred shows at this point. So, yeah. All right. I don't know if I'll count it backwards, maybe. So three... <laughs> Um, it's a weird one, but actually seeing the Misfits, um, and it was, uh, Jerry only, and it was one of the first concerts I got to go to as an adult woman, um, after I left my husband. So there was kind of like, I think I had been to a couple concerts, but that one there was, um, a really symbolic one because I couldn't afford to go. I was a single mom and I was struggling and a friend of mine or was it the family? Somebody kind of surprised me and they were like, hey, yeah, no, you know what? Like, you really wanted to go to this one. It's kind of a once in a lifetime thing for you. So, you know what? We're going to watch the kids. Here's some dough. Like, get in a cab and, you know, get your ass there. And literally had to, like, rush to it and make it there on time. And it was, ended up being a really great experience for me. And just a fun night and ran into people there that I knew. I think Taya Monster was there and, and a bunch of people. And, and, that I was kind of familiar with at that time because I was running the vampire group still or just coming out of that. And that was a wild night. Um, two, might be either, yeah, maybe Skinny Puppy. I never got to see them when I was younger and they were like huge in Toronto and, and I always kind of managed to miss them. And then when they came around a few years ago, I got to go. And I had just come out of a bad relationship and it was like my first night out with friends and kind of blowing off steam and just being in the room with Ogre was fucking amazing. And like, 
you just the blood and fake blood and like the gore and just the unexpected shenanigans on stage was like an experience for me because I really didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what a stage presence they had until I went. And the f number one would absolutely be Ninja. My 30th birthday going to see Nine Inch Nails and Jane's Addiction. And to celebrate, my sister and I ended up doing mushrooms. Nice. <laughs> I can tell you I don't remember much of the fucking show <laughs> at all. <laughs> I hear it was wonderful. <laughs> but we were tripping balls so bad. <laughs> and we knew the show was was winding up. We could kind of tell that vibe at the end of the night, you know, that they're like uh, playing that those last couple songs. And we were like, you know what? We want to get out of here before the crowds, right? So we decide that we're going. And also at that point, <laughs> security was kind of watching us because my sister was like lying down and, and it was just obvious we were tripping at that point. And I guess they were like kind of like either worried about us or ready to kick us out. I don't know how rambunctious we were being. <laughs> and we're walking out and then this one security guard kind of comes up to us. And my sister just without skipping a beat looks at him and she goes, you're too late. We're leaving. <laughs> just points her finger in his face and we just walk the fuck out of there. We're like dying and this guy's probably like, what the fuck? <laughs> But oh, it was a great night. And then we went to like the hideout, and like she knew all like the guys that worked there. And I, I don't remember if I knew them. I couldn't recognize them at that point. I was so like out of it. Right. But apparently it was closed because there was a band filming um, a video for one of their songs or something. So they're like, "But oh, we know you girls. You're the Teachman girls. Whatever, right? You guys can go like hang out on the patio while we're filming or whatever." So we're out on the patio with this band's like filming and they've got all these people inside filming. And there's like these people sitting at a table and we realized kind of after a while that they're probably like the band's people, right? That's why they're not inside while this is going on. And then they kind of come up to us and they're like, you know, you two look really fucking cool. We'd love it if you would come in and be in the video. And we're like, we were so stoned though. We're like, yeah, no, you know what? Like, great, but no. Nah. <laughs> And I think my sister said something like, we're too cool for you. <laughs> <laughs> and they were just like, they just kind of sat in the corner and stared at us the rest of the night. <laughs> but it was like the best fucking birthday. And then, of course, like we just got to the point where um, we were outside, like we went out to the street at some point. And I took a picture and there was like a car going by. And even in the picture, you could see like the trails from the lights. And I'm like, okay, even my camera is fucking high now. We need to go home. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, so that, that had to be number one just for the experience. <laughs> awesome. Your turn. Oh, geez. Well, I, I wasn't not, I wasn't not paying attention to you. I was actually trying to figure out who was opening for Uncle. So uh, one of mine would be Uncle Acid and the Deadbeats. And this was nice. 2014. I've seen them three times, but this was the first time they uh, they toured North America. Right. And this was their third album. This was the Mind Control uh, tour. And it was amazing. Like they barely even, like Kevin Starr barely even spoke at mm. this point. Like all you could see is like, you know, him, the other guitar player, the bass player, all up front. And they're all singing the harmony parts, and he barely spoke. It was just everyone's well. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and it, but you know, he talks a little more now. But anyways, it, uh, the reason why is because it was at least Palace, and I'd seen a lot of good bands there. But uh, that's where I met uh, Brent and Rachel from the band NLP, the local band. Mm -hmm. And we ended up, and they were like, "Well, we play in kind of like a doomy Sabbath band." And I'm like, "Well, I play in like a doomy post-apocalyptic punk band." And we ended up becoming really good friends. Uh, Brent, actually, like, uh, he's the guy who actually engineered the first six or seven episodes of The Turn of Night. Okay. I recorded it oh, at cool. his place. So, like, we're still friends to this day. I've still got a bass guitar up at his place in the stockyards. Um, I think the other one, we're talking about Ozzy and Sabbath. I get really nostalgic about... Um, Ozzy seeing him on the uh, No Rest for the Wicked tour. Mm. Because that lineup was... A very fresh-faced Zach Wild mm -hmm. when he still had that NFL physique. Straight out the gas station. On bass, Bob Daisley did the album, but Geezer Butler did the tour. So Geezer oh, Butler nice. on bass, you know, in the leather jacket, and then he's still jet black hair, yeah. big mustache, Geezer Butler. And on drums is the late Randy Castillo. So if you ever watch that... stud. If, actually, if you ever watch that show, uh, Rumble, The Indians That Rock the World, about indigenous artists... Randy's actually featured. Cool. In that. Um, 
but that, that's it's kind of a tie because mm -hmm. I, I hate to be the guy that says, "Well, there's a tie," you know. But no, there, there is a tie because I saw Black Sabbath on the uh, on the Forbidden tour, which Geezer didn't do, mm -hmm. and you know that album gets a lot of hate and stuff like that. But you know what? I did get to see a lineup: uh, Dave the Beast Spitz on bass, mm -hmm. uh, Jeff Nichols on keyboards. Um, obviously Tony Iommi on guitar. Tony Martin was singing, but on drums was Cozy Powell. Okay. And this was 1996, I want to say, 95. And the thing is, is that uh, early in 98, uh, actually they, somebody just posted it about it the other day because it's been 25 years now since uh, Cozy Powell died. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah, so like I got to see these two legendary drummers that are no longer here. Um, so there's that. Uh, also, I, I, I don't know. I, I, uh, I was talking about Johnny Cash earlier. That concert stayed with me. That was like the benchmark for a long time. Mm. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I got a, a, a very similarly structured concert was Ministry <laughs> in 96. Oh, on yeah. On the yeah. Phil Pick tour because it was like you had a couple guitars. You had a legendary bass player, a legendary drummer, a legendary keyboard player. Just like the Johnny Cash band, mm. you know, uh, no special guests came up. Mm. So Jello Biafra or Ian MacKay didn't come up, but they did divide it into two sets. So it was like new songs, old songs. Okay. And Al came out and, you know, he got the cheap wrestling pop by opening up his jacket <laughs> and having, <laughs> and having, a, having a, 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 a Maple Leafs jersey. Yeah. Good old Uncle Al. You know, and then, wow. and then the second set comes out wearing a Blackhawks jersey and goes, well, here's a real fucking team. Like, <laughs> <laughs> heel turn, okay, okay, heel yeah, turn. Okay, you know, there's the Chicago, uh, there's the Chicago guy, you know, it. you got to stick it to us. So, you, know, so, you know, so that, that concert, that one, that's another one that yeah. stayed yeah. with me for yeah. a long time. And, you know what? And actually, when they did, uh, I found this out years later. Actually, when I moved to Toronto, they did. There was this live album that came out, and it was from uh, the Filth Pig tour. Yeah. And the song Filth Pig on that live album was the one from that concert. That nice. Was Varsity from... Arena. So. Yeah, because they, they did have a live in Toronto album. I don't know if it was that tour. I think it might have been an earlier one. I'm not too sure. I'm trying to remember it. Oh, they got a bunch of live albums. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. It might have been later. Yeah. yeah. They'd probably be like number four, number four, number five for me. Yeah. But I didn't get to see them until the Antifa tour. So that was fairly recent, too. Oh, wow. wow. Okay. Yeah. And also, I, I, and, and, but you know what? Here's, the, here's one last thing. Deadbolt. Deadbolt, the world's scariest band. And the funny thing is, every time I see them, people come up to me afterwards and go, great job, man. Because <laughs> <laughs> I show up, I show up and, and people look at me, you know, and they're like, well, they think you're in Deadbolt. Because, yeah. you know. You know, you kind of got the same hair as Harley and the other guys, and you're wearing a leather vest or, yeah. or whatever. And I'm like, uh, people slapping me on the back, truck driving, son of a bitch. And like, <laughs> <laughs> this happened in LA. <laughs> this happened in LA. And every time I see them, he remembers me because, you know, like, I'm like, hey, because I, I do that Animal mm. House thing. Hey, Otis, you played at my college. <laughs> And he's like, oh, you goddamn Canadian guys. You know? <laughs> so like, I'm like, uh, man, if he ever branches out, I want to, I want to do a Canadian. Like, if he franchises the band, yeah. like Hell Kiss yeah. keeps threatening to do. Yeah, uh, it's toss up between Kiss and Deadpool. Yeah, you know, that's awesome. <laughs> I love it. So, so that's it for me. <laughs> fuck. Okay. So while you guys have all been telling your stories, I've been listening and I've been like going over my list, and then going over my list again, and I keep fucking changing it. So then it's like. Spout off the top three off the top of my head. So, in no particular order, it was uh, Ministry in Winnipeg, and they had My Life with a Thrill Kill Cult mm. and the Hansel and Gretel open for them. Nice. That's a bill. So, yeah. Hansel and Gretel, uh, I'm like, man, that guy's got pipes on him. I'm like, put my glasses on, I'm like, that's the dude it's a chick. She's got the voice of a fucking Valkyrie. Oh my god. So it was sold on them so hard. Like we had it was at the the Burton Cummings Theater because Winnipeg has the only thing going on. That is Canadian has it gets. So, I'm in front row or getting our brains melted by fucking Hansel and Gretel. And then TKK come out next. And I'm mm -hmm. like, yes. I finally get to see TKK. Locals not that great uh. but al makes the whole show worth it so prior when when hansel and Gretel were playing 
he was up on the stage, he's dancing around and stuff like that, having a great time. Security guard doesn't realize that Al's part of the show, <laughs> thinks he's so mad by him, he's on stage, and grabs a hold of him, and he's trying to pull him out. And Al's like, I'm fucking with one of the fucking band. And he starts punching the security guy. <laughs> and then the other security guys oh, jump no. in, and they're grabbing the security guy and pulling him mm. away. Yeah. And Al's like, grab, grabs the mic, he's like, fucking fire that guy. <laughs> He's a fucking idiot. Blah blah blah. We're here for a good time. And blah blah blah. So they escort the the, the offender out. TKK plays. Third, the vocals aren't that great. Like the, it's. I mean, most of it's awesome, but when he has to start doing anything higher than what he has to do, voice is not really going there. The bassist is making eyes and blowing kisses at my fucking wife. <laughs> He's just like giving her a light that yeah, baby. After this show is over, you can ditch that square who's like 130 pounds and fucking go with a real man. And Al comes out while they're playing. Two of the other guys from his band come out. They jump and tackle the keyboard player and drag him off the stage. <laughs> so, so they're down one set of keys. They're still doing their shit and they're just like, well, whatever. Al's going to do what Al's going to do. Cue, like, three minutes later, the keyboard player comes back out. He's wrapped head to toe and fucking in, in, uh, saran wrap. Oh <laughs> and they flip his hands out so they can still play the keyboards. And they pick him up and they place him in front of the keyboards. And he's playing the keyboards. He can't fucking move. It looks like a T-Rex. He's, yeah, he's sealed. And then fucking ministry comes on and it just fucking blew my mind. Yeah. And it took like four days for my ears to stop ringing, yeah. but it was <laughs> fucking amazing. I never had so much fun in a game. So that that's that's top three. The second one would be uh, it would have been uh, it was Lady Tron, and mm -hmm. it was at Cool House, and they had CSS open for them. And CSS, if you're not a, don't know who they are, they're like a they were like an indie electronic band from like South America, I think. So they had some stuff in the early, like, mid to late 2000s. Uh, so they opened up for them. And I'm like, okay, great. I get to see Lady Tron for the third fucking time. It's going to be awesome. CSS does their shit. I'm like, okay, Lady Tron's going to come out next. Lady Tron comes out and does Lady Tron stuff, which is just singing, standing in front of their keyboards, and just playing like, this is the only thing that gives me sustenance to live. There's like... No excitement. People clap and applaud. I'm in. I'm in loving it because they're just fucking awesome. And then halfway through their fucking set, the lead singer from CSS. I, I guess there's something about like lead singers from other bands coming out. So the lead singer from CSS comes out, and she's dancing on stage, and suddenly she's like pushing, moving around, and like making them like move around and dance. And she's laughing, and they're kind of starting to... The facades are breaking, and they're starting to smile. And she's crowd surfing. Mm. She's legit fucking crowd surfing on a lady... Like, during Lady <laughs> Tron performance. Crowd surfing and the Lady 17th. Tron starts fucking cracking up and laughing. Mm. And, like, suddenly the energy in the fucking crowd goes from, like, here. And it goes up, like, 10,000 fucking percent. Mm. Because, oh, I mean, people are already yeah. there to, like... Yeah. They're already loving it. But now the band is like fucking enjoying themselves and yeah. laughing and having a good time and suddenly it just fucking explodes and mm -hmm. like the whole crowd is swept up in it. This whole different vibe. It yeah. is. Yeah. And it's all because she fucking decided to fucking go crowd surfing. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then the third thing would be fuck. I wanna say it's a tie because I wanna I wanna copy that. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's, no, seriously. It's, yes. it's, it's a tie it's between a uh Violent Femmes. They played. Mm, uh, they wow. played at the yeah. uh, University of Manitoba, and they were in the auditoriums. So they weren't even on the concert thing. So like we're sitting in fucking like mm. desks, and they do the first song, and we're all fucking excited because it's Violent Femmes. It's like early yeah. '90s. Yeah. They do a second song. We're singing so fucking loud that their lead singer stops singing. <laughs> so they're playing all their fucking songs. So, okay, we're going to do this one next. And everybody's fucking singing along with them. So that's how the rest of the concert went. We sang every fucking Violent Dem song. 
and they, the rest of the band just fucking played along with Ooh, us. Ooh, that's rock and roll magic. Yeah, that, that was is fucking cool, amazing. Yeah. And the, the 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 tie with that was seeing uh, um, the beat mm. with members of the selector and specials, and they play that leads. And I found out about the show. I got there. The place was fucking so packed you couldn't fucking move. Like you got in, and it was just like sardines all over the place. And you're just like you're oh. stuck. You Those secret dance. shows always end up getting out. You can't dance, yeah. you can't do anything. You're just, it's just like you've got three inches of sweat on you. <laughs> and they're doing a bunch of like English beat songs. And then, <sighs> then fucking guy from the specials comes out and he's like, someone screams, Rude Boy! And he's like, Rude Boy! And then they're doing like, they do like two special songs, they do two selector songs that go back into the beat. And everybody is bouncing up and down because you can't move around, you can't <laughs> dance. All you can do is fucking pogo. So you've got a room of like, I don't know how many people can fit in the knees, probably like 300 maybe? Yeah. yeah 300, 300 people yeah. Yeah, wall to wall. bouncing yeah. at the same time and fucking singing <laughs> and having a great time. Fucking just delirious from the heat. Yeah, losing so much of their their body weight to the sweating, and no one fucking cares. Mm -hmm. You you have to like you're like wiggling around, trying to get to the bar so you <laughs> can hold a beer up against your chest to keep yourself somewhat cool and maybe have a couple of sips of it before you spill them all over the place. But it was I had never seen a place so packed and people so into everything and just having a great time and not caring who the fuck you were. It wasn't about, like, this, the problem I always found with this city is that you can go to shows and love it, but you know, half the crowd there is just to say, hey, I was at that show. And yeah, have yeah. no love for it. And that was just a room full of people that just, they yep. just wanted to hear some, it sounds like an oxymoron to say, they wanted to hear some good ska, mm. <laughs> but they wanted to hear some good ska and have a great time and that was it and it was just fucking awesome you've been listening to the parlay boom we were really excited and happy that you decided to join us and listen to us regale stories of our of our past and what we plan for the future and there will be more as long as you listen and you will listen you know it's good for you